So I'm Roshna Dhan. I'm the Director of Product Management for InfoSight and our manageability in general. And what I want to talk here about is how we've taken a very application-oriented view toward manageability. So here at Nimble, manageability and customer experience is very important to us. We lay a lot of emphasis on it. We know that the IT admin is, has their list of responsibilities is growing. They don't have time. The last thing they want to do is spend time learning infrastructure concepts. They rather focus on their applications, they rather focus on their SLAs, because that mimics their business the closest. And so taking this very, uh, very effortless management oriented, application management oriented approach, and then mixing it with what Rod talked about, predictive analytics, machine learning, you'll see a lot more of that with David. When we mix the two, what we actually do is change the life of an IT admin. You know, he's not reactive anymore, his pager is you know, not ringing all the time. And he's configuring things properly because he's configuring from an application-oriented perspective. Um, and so that is our vision, that you manage applications, you manage SLAs, and not really your infrastructure. So with that, I'm going to go into actual InfoSight and show you what I mean by application-oriented management in InfoSight. So this is one view in InfoSight. I mean, there's a lot of capabilities. We'll go to the predictive and machine learning. But what I'm showing you here is how you see application uh, from, uh, from how you see your data on your nimble assets from an application perspective. There's several use cases. Imagine you're going to your CIO, the IT admin wants more budget, he needs to expand, and the first thing the CIO is gonna say is, what happened to all that investment from a year ago? Well, this is where he can show that you know, his exchange has taken so much, his SQL has taken so much, so the picture is very clear of where your investments have really gone. And this is across all assets. So you could have, I don't know, some of our customers have hundreds of uh, nimble arrays. This is across all of those, a nice clean snapshot from an application perspective. Roshna, how did you, uh, you understand what applications are using what's, you know? So very early on when we first shipped on nimble array, the very first shipping was application oriented. And what we had in there is when you provision storage, we realized that storage concepts are not something people should have to learn, and so we make it application. So when you actually go to provision a volume, you tell us what application you're gonna put in the volume. Once you do that, that becomes a very powerful policy for us. We can uh, optimally provision storage, you know, there's block sizes, there's all those other things that can be done optimally for, for a given application. Uh, there's protection, you know, somebody asked a question of synchronized uh, BSS, synchronized application, synchronized protection, we can turn that on. We can give statistics such as these. So once you're, you've told our system, that policy is saved and that policy is used multiple times throughout the life cycle. So this is, a, you know, I said this is across all the sites. Uh, you may want to see more uh, details from here. So for example, this admin wants to know, this is great that this is exchange, but what underneath that exchange is this? Because you know, an application is made out of multiple volumes, not just, uh, not just a single volume, even though we're able to show it to you single. You can see more detail. So you can see that your exchange is actually made up of your data store and your exchange log, which is the best way to actually provision since they both have very different characteristics. Let me also give you a very quick view of how you can, and of course you can see savings, so is this at an array level or a customer level or this, this is your customer cus base? These are all nimble assets for that customer, right? So it's, it's aggregated across all the, the whole assets. customer. Yes. Let story. me show you for, yeah. So if I have, you know, 50 nimble arrays, this is aggregated uh, across all my uh, nimble arrays so I can get a very holistic picture. If you want to see it asset by asset, we have that too. Uh, I just, just try and understand. There you go. So this is actually, this is a nimble IT storage. They have about, what, 15 arrays. Um, and this is the breakup of the application around each array. That is the view that you want to see. So there's, there's lots of things. You can see snapshots by, uh, by application. You, know, you, may, you may want to see if, uh, if there is too many snapshots, et cetera, so that you can do all of that. From here, um, let me move on to this thing called the executive dashboard. So many customers, you know, we talked about making a business case to the CIO. Another thing the IT admin likes to do is understand their return on their investment. How well is the nimble array doing? You know, the sales promised a lot of uh, 
savings, et cetera? Am I really getting that? So this is the place where they can come see uh, that they're actually getting uh, what they were promised in terms of uh, savings. The other thing people like to do is to see, hey, what is my RPO today by application again for various applications? And so this can help you ensure that your most critical applications have the, the, the smallest RPO, et cetera. Uh, Gavin mentioned earlier the power of our snapshots. We have very CPU and very uh, space efficient snapshots. And so we have a lot of customers that are taking very small, very small RPOs that they couldn't before. And further, they're retaining that data on primary storage, which is also something they could not do before. And as you know, recovery from primary storage is very, very fast. And so this is the retention by application again on the, on the primary storage on Nimble Assets. And then similarly for disaster recovery, you can see how, um, how your various applications are protected uh, by, uh, by replication. In our case, we're not doing too much application, but if you see a lot on the right, that means that that's what's protected. Again, it's a bird's eye view of seeing if you are investing your, your resources in the right place. There are other views in the executive dashboard. I won't go into details. David will talk about it. But we have the ability to actually show you very clearly at your fingertips how we are doing in terms of headroom on your array, in terms of CPU, memory, et cetera. So with that, I want to go into another um, tool here. And we call it the application sizing tool. So now you have made a case. You have the budget. and you you're trying to deploy, say, a new application. Say, for example, you didn't have Exchange on the Nimble Array, and now you want to deploy Exchange on the Nimble Array. How do you know what you need? What do you need in terms of cash? What do you need, you know, even in the, the all-flash array? What do you need in terms of capacity, power, et cetera? We have an application planning tool where you can just give information that is readily available for you. So for Exchange, for example, you say how many mailboxes, what's the size of the mailboxes, what is top-line I.O.? And because we have so much application data, so for example, Exchange, we have six years worth of data uh, that, and thousands and thousands of Exchange deployments that we have studied and continue to study that we understand the characteristic of that application underneath. So we leverage that knowledge to help you size uh, future deployments. Um, I have some people in the back actually tweaking this right now because we are changing the, the interface completely, but I can still show you a few things. So I simply come here, I say this is my, um, wait, so this is just my exchange, my exchange instance, exchange deployment, and then I say this I'm going to put on the all flash array, <coughs> and here I say, hey, help me size my application. And so all I have to do is go there and add the application. For example, I want exchange. And then, of course, I have to say, um, not by amount of data, but I want to specify by amount of mailboxes, because that's something that is more obviously uh, available to me. And so I say, well, I have about 2,000 people in the company. I want 2,000 mailboxes, and I want to give them about 2 uh, gig of, uh, of mailbox size. And here, I say, I don't really want to specify all the details. I'm just going to say, hey, use the measured I.O. values. So for example, what is the read-write ratio? You know, what is, let me just say 10,000 here. So what this does is, you know, I don't need to know what is the characteristics, how much read, how much write, how much random, how much sequential, no. Because we already know all of that. InfoSight is very smart when it comes to, uh, to knowing applications. So I just type that out, and then, I create that opportunity. Oh, allocated per box. And there it goes. It gives me a whole bunch of estimates and, the, and, the, and how conservative those estimates can be. Uh, you know, depending on now, there's always a lot of choices you can go with. Sometimes some people like to over-provision, some like just enough provisioning. So it really depends on what risk profile the customer has. And then here, you can also pick and choose and see what array 
you want to pick, and then it tells you exactly how much uh, infrastructure you need underneath there. So this, again, is the power of knowing, uh, collecting data, trillions and trillions of pieces of information, and then uh, analyzing that uh, through machine learning. So we're talking of applications. We don't just stop at applications, right? We actually go uh, through the stack. So it's not just the storage, it's the hypervisor, it's the server hardware itself, and it's the virtual machine. I mean, virtual machine is, is the gold standard if you're actually going to tell someone where the bottleneck is across the stack. And so virtual machine also is a good approximation for a workload. You know, you have one workload per virtual machine. So what I'm going to show you here is something that our customers absolutely love, and it's called, uh, we call it VM Vision. And what VM Vision does is essentially solves two very prevalent use cases in the industry. So IT admins will agree that the two use cases are, the first one is they get a call from the SQL admin saying, my application is running slow. Guess what? It's the infrastructure that he's going to blame. And the blame game is going to start from the lowest layer, which is the storage first, then the hypervisor, you know, the server, the hypervisor, and maybe just the VM that's running slow. And so we understand that perspective, and what we enable them to do is see exactly where that bottleneck is coming from across the stack. So, for example, I can go here and say I know that the VM is called, um, you know, Puppet. It's one of the VMs that we are running, and that's the virtual machine right there. So again, in InfoSight, I have come, and all I've done is type the name of the a virtual machine, and here it's showing me very clearly across the stack where the latency for that virtual machine is coming from. In our case, there is no latency from network, but it's going to actually break up host, network, and storage, which is very, very handy. Further, if you see that the latency is coming from the host, say the ESX server in case of VMware, you can see what, what's causing it. Is it memory? Is it CPU? Maybe you need to add CPU. Maybe you need to add another ESX node. So it's very clearly shown here. There's also more technical information, CPU ready and uh, CPU usage, which uh, vSphere admins know how to interpret. So that is one use case. You can also see noisy neighbors. So what are the VMs that could be influencing the performance of that one, uh, one VM? Um, and a lot of the actions that people take after this is either giving more resources to the VM, deploying more ESX, or just moving one workload into a different cluster or into a different uh, ESX host. The second use case is InfoSight alerted me that my uh, infrastructure is running hot, <coughs> running at high, usable, uh, high usage. Uh, who is, what application is causing that? Who has changed their application last night without informing the IT admin, and that happens a lot as well. So for that, we have a view that you can go to. And we call it the data, um, the data store tree, where you can see that's the view. So this is a very holistic picture of what's going on on that piece of infrastructure. It's showing you all the VMware data stores, the size, uh, the area of the data store is actually uh, proportional to the I.O. size. And then the color is the latency. So you can see a lot of I.O. is going on in that data, data store. And the sub boxes in the data store are actually the virtual machines. And because of the color, I can see that this virtual machine here has very high latencies. So I can see where the I.O. is coming from, and then I can see where the high latencies are coming from. So for example, there's this tiny virtual machine that's experiencing very high latency. I can click into it, and I can see what's going on. So then these are all the virtual machines that are in that data store, and I can see lots of statistics around them, the total so, so does, average latency. Does Nimble support virtual volumes and that sort of thing? Yes, yes. Starting with the 3.x release, uh, we do support virtual volumes. And if you see uh, Twitters from uh, Duncan Epping and, Ro and Rawlinson from VMware, we've gotten very high praise. They've actually called our VWAS deployment one of the most comprehensive they have seen in the industry. Um, and I would encourage you to read our blogs and take a look at that as well. The last one I want to leave you with is, you know, just this question that people ask all the time, well, what is um, my top VM? What's the top IO and what's the top latency? So this is just a dashboard they can come into. I need to install uh, an agent, a uh, VIB in the ESX or not? 
No, no agents. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lots of emphasis again on manageability. Agents are a mess to manage. Uh, the nimble array ships with whatever it is that you need. We actually have uh, a piece of software that's in there. And it actually makes calls, the API calls and collects data. 